you, Vita Golem, back on our base, okay. Nick Bond, using the Rollins and all the other machines, and he was very unique, very and very creative, and very like, could make very scary sounds and very intense sounds. I think it is all his own artwork with sound too. Because like he would do beautiful like dances, almost like in art things, but with really intense sound. He had a way of being like funny and um, and sexy awesome. and. Like, yeah, junky, like, in you know, a way that looks fun, very fun. Yeah, really, really fun. Yeah. And Frankie had a rock and roll guitar style. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this question for you. The lyrics of the TV I open mm -hmm. have a very special explicit content. Ah, mon vieux. Benito. Benito. Tell me who wrote the question. <laughs> Translating? No, I know. You know, you have to bet TV for it. It's true. That's why. I think that's why people love it. So, what inspiration comes from? Oh, well, the name is from me and Baca went out of bar after our, after our, our first practice. After our first practice, we were at a bar called I See Guys. It was like a small gay bar in the village that was literally like, you know, aside from very small, like, uh, um, small living room sized bar. But it had like a kind of podium for a go go jam surf. Mm -hmm. Really kind of cool. And there's a Maryland chamber porno. And we're like, what should our name be? I don't know what we were talking about. Like, different name. And she goes, it's pretty wide open. Oh, she's getting fucked, and it's just really crazy. She looks like Keith Richards, and she looks like she's kind of possessed by a demon. So that was our name. But we were already into sex, um, sex, rock and roll. Like, just very into it. Um, so, you know, like, just being as long as have fun and be naked and drink a bottle with me and be naked. I think is what I did from our first practice, and I think, like, Nick was very advanced and made a lot of erotic, in its own way, art. And Frankie and Becca were just good to go. Becca's a sexy, sexy woman. So. <laughs> That's why we're attracted to her. She's fun. Oh, we can tell. We can tell by the song that there is a turn down tendency. Tendency. To experiment of life, for instance, I say sleep to me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the chamber that I go to sleep chamber. Sleep. What is that? That is no. That is Gaga. No, that is Gaga. Yeah, 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 yeah. But by your own, in your own words, what is the main influence you have from the sound and performance? After the sound and performance, but what? For the sound, I'm trying to think backwards. You know what I mean? Because I don't, I want, I don't want to say what I think it is now. I don't want to say what I think I thought it was. I was like just really wanting to do like, a show and have fun, like getting into it, getting intense mm -hmm. and crazy and. Uh, kind of desperate and rock and roll. Yeah. You know, a little, <laughs> yeah, like that kind of like, I need to, to do it, I want to die, I want to talk to people, I want to dance.
Yeah, because you and John Vomit collaborated and made like some very beautiful green like crystal installation and Conrad made this beautiful outfit and I was misbehaving and the sound was a disaster and it was ended up being like a prayer to God for help. It's like I feel like the show is a disaster. It was a disaster. It was a disaster. It was like a Halloween party. It's a disaster. Most people consider that it was good. But that's something else. Our shows were also sometimes like disasters. You know. But anyway, for me that show was a disaster because I was like feeling crazy. But yes, you made a lot of art. A lot of beautiful art. Um, okay, yeah. To this kind of subversive to to rock, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sound tells by itself that the ideology content is very important for too many listeners sometimes. I agree. For you, independently of any other music project you have been part of, uh, of it, do you consider yourself as a pure music musician? as a pure music man, or, uh, or an artist with ideas? An artist with ideas. Okay. Definitely. Now, I don't even know if I'm an artist with ideas. I'm trying to just be like a person, more just like a regular person. I think I'm more like a regular person now, and I have some ideas. I'm trying to retain myself to be a regular person. It's more healthy. <laughs> Probably, but... No, I'm kidding. But, but... An artist with ideas. Like we're not well, I shouldn't say because actually they're all good. Conrad is a serious like everyone actually is a musician and put me wide open. You know? Mm -hmm. But I don't think and great and doing very different beautiful styles, like Frankie's rock and roll style, um, John Vomit with goth gothy, folky kind of stuff and has beautiful projects and is continuing making tons of music. Conrad is a high energy superstar, but he's very into like it being melodic and intense and back up, you know, how to read. But my point is that I didn't feel like I was like like a so necessarily like super great musician myself. No, I'm not. But I like to perform, and I like making the exactly the whole idea. Okay. I believe. I believe in it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, there is a platform in your city for underground rock. Um, you play a CD. Yeah. <laughs> There are many places where draw, text, and subversion were similar characteristics. Mm -hmm. no? uh, can you describe a list performance of the band during this day? Yeah. Um, one wonderful performance we did at a gallery. I don't think you were there, Ben. It was called Gavin Brown and whatever. We, Becca had a red Peugeot car, and we found like a smashed version of the same car. It was very fucked up, like in years. So, me and her used to ride around in her car, and then there was a, we got it from Queens, we got it, and it was very New York y. Put it in front of the gallery. Me, Connie, Frankie, and Becca all got in, and were covered in blood, like we died. It was covered, and sirens started, and we were rocked on the stretchers into the gallery to do the show. So that was like really, really, I think it felt really intense because it was very much like our fullest on um, like low, okay. weird performance. But our typical shows, yeah, just like, we have a lot of girls screaming in the audience. I love to roll with crazy girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm crying. I just... Well, yeah. The new love. Oh, really? Screaming. Screaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the lore? 
where we met. Uh, I think, right? Okay. <laughs> it's true. Nice memory. Yeah, nice memory. No, but, but um, they were very nice to us, John, and they, they, they did like, they were very on leather fag, realness, and it was like kind of an honor. It was good to play at those parties. So I think their gays cruising like kind of liked it, mm -hmm. but it's a different scene than the like trashed out rock and roll. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now what, what impressed me that night when that we met. Is that really when we met? That's when we met. Was, uh, we, was that Laura pick up his, well, I don't know, if he had a, a bell? Yeah. And he was slapped. <laughs> Uh, Laura was slapping me in the face. Yeah, yeah, no, no, not in the face. Oh. Not in your, your leg oh. right, while you were singing. Oh my god. Gosh. Gosh. Oh, wow. Wow. Why? I know, it's wild. I love this crew. <laughs> Why, yeah, we're kind of a wild crew. And, you know, we, we roll like a little wild. <laughs> With Laura on top side. We just were wild. Okay. Um, we want to know which were the opportunities for the band to sign with a big label. None and what do you think, <laughs> and what do you think <laughs> of taking an under one, underground band into commercial? No. Well, so we were never given that opportunity. <laughs> we were just one. Yeah, or just maybe, I don't know why. But once the guy Who uh, was like the manager of Interpol or something came to our shows. But we always had like something weird going on because at the time we had like this lady who was our manager, kind of whatever, whatever that means. And so it just slipped through, it didn't happen. And then, yeah, so it just kind of fluttled by. And you know, I think we're a little disorganized to be part of some other situations and scenes that were existing at that exact moment. A little bit like, um, yeah, disorganized. Okay. Or kook, kooky. By um, reading the few articles that talk about the band yeah. in the few media, mm -hmm. Um, we never know the reason of the separation of that. Yeah. Um, it was not clear why you stopped it. Um, even we have heard that John Bonnie still waiting to, to come back with you guys. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Wow. So. Um, I know you you're still working with Conrad uh, in another project called yeah. Mail Room. Yeah. Um, uh, so you can tell us about uh, if you go back in time, what was the reason for the operation? What was I think we must. I I don't even know, but I mean I I do know. I I think. I think maybe everyone was sick of it, sick of it, sick of me. I think people were sick of me because I was like, a whole lot to deal with. Pain in the ass. Um, so maybe, and then also I think Connie wanted to do different music, wanted to do different music, <laughs> not like the gothy kind of, or whatever you want to call it. That's when my husband was like, he like, and me and Connie already had mail room, so he loved that happy, not happy, but like a, that sound, Connie really loves high energy. So me and him were already doing that. And then John and Becca and me, it wasn't so, it just started to feel, it's hard to be a trio. And then also Becca wanted to move out of town. Okay. I was kind of confused, John. So it just sort of, so kind of like unwrapped, flopped, fell apart for, um, so a number of reasons. Okay, so I that was my subjective interpretation. Okay. Um, so yeah, but I, I mean, yeah, 
So I think it just kind of maybe. Okay. So for uh, you, I'm going to have less, a, less an opportunity to to continue with my room, right? You yeah, but I think my thought is that you continue. You didn't stop, and that's why. But I think, yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I can't really remember, but I think I still was able, I was still working with Connie. I think Beckham moved away, and I think, I think I still worked with John independently, too. Mm -hmm. So I think I wanted to keep going, but it was just hard time from that. I'm not feeling comfortable tonight There's no guarantee that you'll be alright I take the train alone at night Thinking things, you're thinking thoughts, you're coming back to life. All the dead things, they're coming back to life. I wanna go to the bad party. I ain't never been to one before. You have considered to to um, uh, go back to the reform the the band, right? Right. Uh, what changes or what else can you have to destroy it from now? I don't think it would happen. I don't think it's the right project because there's so much, like you were talking before, has to do with. Uh, Mental state of mind. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's, I'm not in that. So I'm not, not, not in no. I'm not in this living my open state of mind. Yeah, like I don't think I could like no. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it makes any. It just makes any sense. Does that make sense? That, that makes, sense. Sense. It makes sense, right? Like we don't. So we yeah, don't. you gotta understand. What? What? It worked for that time. Yeah. The feel of that 
non spettacoli, ma non si vedono a posto a più.
Daniel.
Really? Yeah, thanks. Okay, so um, there were many bands that emerged during the electro revival uh, movement uh, for the beginning of the 21st century in New York. Um, how was the new world open? <laughs> Come to life during. Uh, during this time on electro star time. So, it's a good question. <laughs> I think we came to life around the year 2000. Um, and 